Welcome to the first recipe. Um, when transitioning to this lifestyle, uh, when I first started reading these uh, raw food recipes, raw food cookbooks, I learned that there was some prep work, some pre-work that needed doing, like soaking the nuts, it called for things like that. So one of my tricks is to pre-soak, um, wash, rinse, and then dehydrate, as you know, when you've seen already. So I've got some activated almonds that I've just dropped in a bit of water already in this particular recipe. So this first recipe we're going to be looking at is uh, a flax and nutcracker, um, mm -hmm. which is on page 161. Now, Judy Barber actually came and stayed with me uh, last year and, and sort of got me on the road with this and obviously my requirement to get on the road was a lot higher than most people's um, but Judy Barber was a wonderful lady and she came and spent three four days with me and I went and stayed down there for a few days just so I could learn the process so she's got um, this recipe book good raw food recipes which there'll be a link down below so you can actually buy that from her directly if you're in the UK um, or you can buy it from Hippocrates if you're over in the US um, so this first recipe, I've just literally gone off the recipe menu and I've just followed it to the book. And what I find now is that I start sort of creating my own versions of a recipe or a foundation to create some kind of nut seed cracker myself. So for this one, uh, I've doubled up the quantity to make sure there's enough quantity for this thing to do some work. So the first is uh, a cup of flax seeds, which I've left to soak already, which is what the recipe called for. I needed half a cup of almonds that have been soaked for a day or night. Um, so I've already started soaking uh, the first half cup. So I'm going to add in So I'm going to just add in the other half a cup there. So we've got the almonds. Um, we've got a Brazil nut sized chunk of ginger. So I've got two Brazil nut sized chunks of ginger in here. And then I'm going to have two tablespoons of cold pressed olive oil, a teaspoon, a tablespoon of tamari, and then the water, which is where the, uh, the flax seed is currently soaking. So, the first thing it asks for is to whack the flax seed into a bowl, which I've already started with some water. So that's just glooping up now. So it starts to uh, starts to create some kind of gloopy mixture here, um, which is fine. That's what it's meant to do, because that's what the flax seeds and the chia seeds is what is the sort of the binding agent in these flax and nut seed crackers. Um, so the next thing is uh, leave the. F so now we've just got to add everything else into the blender, into the food processor, and with these nuts, we're literally just gonna rinse them off. And then we've just got to blend them until it's a smooth paste. Oh yes. So we need four tablespoons of oil to the book. One, two, three, four. And then two tablespoons of uh, Bragg's or Tamari. And then we can get rolling. There we go. Occasionally you might need to just open the top up and push it down. And we're nearly getting there now. And it's probably gone for about a maximum operating time of about a minute, a minute and a half maybe. Off we go again. Okay. So 
Tastes nice. Okay, now I've finished the, um, the processing until it's a nice sort of smooth paste consistency. Um, we're now ready to combine it all together with the flaxseed. So I started pouring the flaxseed and I just wanted you to see this, is that um, it's, it's gone gloopy already. Uh, so, you know, that's, that's gonna be just perfect to actually add it into the, uh, the mixture. So, there are so many different types of nut crackers, seed crackers you can make. You can make a basic flax cracker, you know, add some, you know, blend some pepper. There's so many different variations of these things you can make. Once you get into it and you just make a bulk, you can get like six of the trays uh, made up and that can just be in stock ready for your lunches and dinners. Um, to buy, you can actually buy uh, raw sprouted nut and seed crackers. Uh, they are expensive and you know when I first started out I bought them in just to get me going um, but now I don't buy any we just make our own and it's just so easy so now we add in the mixture let the spindle fall over the place and cleverly I decided to do an onion based one so if I look like I'm crying in this video I promise you I'm not <laughs> uh, you just had a tea cheeky taste before. I have to say, uh, given the fact I've not actually made these particular ones before, uh, it tastes really good. So now we're just going to mix it up. And if it's, you feel it's a bit thick, now uh, to me that seems a bit thick. So what I'm going to do is add in some, uh, a little bit more water. Just a quarter of a cup, say. And one of my first fears when I started making these is that it just looks too, too sloppy to actually hold up on the sheets on the dehydrator racks. But you'll be amazed once you start dehydrating them and they start to firm up, it's amazing. Um, how they just sort of firm up into a biscuit cracker type shape, whatever shape that you decide to make them. Okay. So we'll just move the processor out of the way, move the book out of the way, so I don't spill anything. If you ask um, anybody that knows me in the kitchen, <laughs> they'd say that I'm the messiest person in the kitchen. So I've probably made a big mess all around me, but we just gotta, you know, at the end of the day, we've gotta get the job done. So here we go. Um, you just literally just spoon it out onto the dehydrator trays. And you find your perfect uh, utensil to smooth it out and I particularly like this spatula um, and you can make them as thick or as thin as you like the thicker they are the longer it takes to dehydrate um, so that's something just to bear in mind Work a bit more on the edge. So you just sort of tap the edges in um, until they're nice and square. And that's pretty much ready to go in the dehydrator. And you can set them off so they start to firm up and then you can score them. So then it's easier to break up into bis bis biscuit sized shapes. It's a bit of a tongue twister. So I'm going to pre-score it now um, and then when I go back and check on them later, I can do it again. So that's it scored. And that's ready to go in the dehydrator, scored, and then it'll be easier to break up. So in about 8, maybe 12 hours or, uh, you know, before I go to bed tonight, 
I'll be able to literally just take, um, take it off here because it will be firm enough and I can just flip it over or put another tray on top of it and flip it over and I can peel off the Teflex sheet. Um, and then it can, it'll dehydrate quicker when it's got exposure to both sides. So these Teflex sheets are just to be used to get it going and then the idea is to flip it over and peel it off. That's two trays done and literally that whole process took me while setting it all up and everything no more than sort of 20 minutes half an hour and that's ready to go in the um, in the dehydrator and it might take up to you know 24 48 hours um, and the longer you leave it in a dehydrator the crispier and cruncher they will get and the longer they'll keep so the, lo the drier you get it the longer they'll keep um, so yeah, I'll just go and set these up in the dehydrator and we'll be ready to crack on with the next recipe for you.